Hello and welcome to Kaleidoscope Teen Radio, which is the podcast for Kaleidoscope Teen Magazine. Kaleidoscope Teen Magazine is an online magazine and digital platform made for and by girls of color. This podcast is in our seventh issue, and because our theme for this issue is college, I wanted to talk about how college isn't always the path for everyone. And so the guest for this episode is Jada Jones. Jada is a YouTuber, podcaster, actor, dancer, singer, basically a triple threat, and overall (laughs) such an amazing and inspirational person. And she decided not to go to college after high school. And I'm really excited to have her here today to talk about her experience. Hi, Jada, how are you today? Hi, I'm so good. And I'm so glad that you asked me to be on this podcast. I've known you for many years. It's probably been three or four years, I'm going to assume. But yeah, this is our first time like actually talking, which I find so weird. But so glad to meet you and so glad to be here today. (laughs) So I know you graduated high school a year early and decided not to go to college from there. How and why did you graduate high school a year? Um, so the way I graduated early, what, well, I actually graduated early. So yeah, the way I did that was just kind of through asking what my options were. I feel like that's so important when it comes to high school, because, um, it can be so easy to just kind of follow what everyone else is doing because you see that, oh, like they're going to college. Oh, they're taking their ACTs and SATs and they're getting ready for so-and-so and so-and-so. So in order to just kind of have your own like mindset, I guess, and like understand what you want, you have to ask what your options are. So I was able to um, understand that I had actually taken uh, classes early. I took classes over the summer and I took um, a couple classes early online and whatnot. And I was able to graduate due to me having fulfilled all my credits. So that was super easy on that end. Um, I also just kind of had to ask what else that I had to do in order to like move up the grade and like whatever. I mean, all complicated stuff, but honestly, it just comes with asking like and actually asking for what you want and asking what your options are. Um, and why I graduated uh, early, I graduated early because um, I really felt like I was ready to just kind of be into the real world. And honestly, at some point when I had first decided that I wanted to graduate early, I thought that I wanted to go to college. Um, You can ask anyone, <laughs> anyone would say that, yeah, like Jada was planning on going to college and going to this and this and this school. And um, there's nothing wrong with changing your idea, you know, ever. So I was like, you know what, I think my la- my la- I made kind of a last minute decision to graduate high school early. So with that being said, I already knew I was graduating early. So I was like, you know what, let's just take the year off. So that was my initial like, you know, thing was gap year. Like, I'm just going to take a year off and like have it all to myself and then whatever. But before I even actually graduated high school, I realized I just didn't want to go to college and like period. So I ended up just not going and I just kind of made that decision throughout experiencing you know like I just didn't make a rash decision like one day like oh I'm just not gonna go like it took some time and um deciding like is this really what I want to do like what do I really want to do you know and then I made that decision and I'm glad I did so yeah you kind of touched on this a little bit but was it like a light bulb moment or were you thinking about not going to college like for a while like did something happen and you were like oh because of that like I'm ready to go into the world and Mm -hmm. start my life or was it like a light bulb moment that you had I'm trying to think back to a time when like I really realized I just didn't want to go but I really can't like I do think it was really just kind of a um decision that I made because I realized that I wanted to pursue not just um you know acting and performing and whatnot but um I actually wanted to pursue um social media as well so I knew that these were all things that I could do on my own time in my own hands so it's just a matter of how much work I was willing to put in so knowing that you know it kind of depended on what I did, you know, as opposed to just kind of, you know, like getting role or something like that. Like those are things that you can't really control sometimes. So, but when it comes to like social media and things that I can do on my own and entrepreneurial rise, I was like, I can just kind of do whatever I want. So I was like, let's test the waters, you know, whatever. And then, I mean, I just kind of realized like, again, before graduating, I was like, you know, what? I actually don't want to go to college. And, you know, that's not shutting down the idea at all. I just really do think that school is always there and it always will be there. So even if I'm like 24 or 25 and I'm like, Hey, like, I think this is the time that I want to go like right now, like who's to say that I can't go, you know? So I just know that right now, while I'm 18, while I'm young, 
um, why not take advantage of all the resources and tools that I've already been given and, you know, so blessed to have been given the opportunity for things to do like this, you know, like having a YouTube platform and, you know, setting my future self up five years ago when I started my channel and whatnot. So like all of these steps that I took, it's like, why would I waste this and, you know, put it on the back burner when I know that this is actually what I want to pursue right now. So that's why I just kind of decided like, Hey, you know what? Like, even if I took off three years, you know, like it didn't have to be a gap year, like it can be many years. And then I decided to go to college and so be it. But, um, I don't know, people don't discuss options enough in school. So with that being said, I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to go my own path. And I'm glad that I have pretty, you know, a strong mindset, like in a sense that I'm not really, um, convinced by other people and their ideas and whatnot because I did have a lot of people in my ears telling me like why aren't you going like this and this and this like don't you want to go for musical theater or don't you want to go for dance even and I'm like no I just I really think I can do this like on my own and that's yeah that's kind of what I did I love that um was your family supportive of your decision um yeah um I just really do think that again I set up myself for my parents to be able to trust me at such an early age that they weren't worried for me because a lot of things that I get like I get tons of dms all the time asking like how did your parents like believe that you could do this and x y and z about parents you know like parents not trusting that I can do this or parents thinking that I should go into the medical field because it pays well and whatever um I I always think that even if parents aren't supportive, you have to understand what you want first in order to, you know, not necessarily saying that because some parents, you won't be able to change their mind, you know, like, and that's just how it's going to be. But when you initially bring up the conversation, if you yourself aren't understanding what you want, how is anyone else going to understand what you want as well? So for me, I, I already knew what I want. I knew exactly what I wanted and I knew exactly how, you know, like why I didn't want to go to college in order to get there. And sitting down with my parents and having that candid conversation and open conversation about, you know, I don't want to go, you know, having that conversation really was like, oh, okay, cool. And, and through trusting, like get, gaining their trust over the past couple of years with just making school with, you know, being responsible with being in X, Y, and Z and managing to juggle all of it at once. It's like, they saw that at an early age. So it wasn't a question. They weren't ever worried, you know, whereas you know, if I didn't and I was failing classes and just wasn't caring about anything or whatever, then it probably was like, mm, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I, you, I can trust you making your own decisions, you know? So my family was always super supportive because of um, just how I'm also able to, um, uh, I guess, convince. I'm a really good convincer. I could have been a lawyer, I feel like, honestly, um, but I'm able to just like, you know, tell them what I want and that's what I'm going to do, you know, and whether if they were supportive or not, like I would have ended up taking the decision that I knew was best for me. So, yeah. Uh, why do you think a lot of people push that college is not the path, uh, is the only path or that yeah. way you'll be successful? I think a lot of people push the whole college is the only path narrative because it's easy. And I don't want to say college is easy because it's not. There are many things that you have to do when you go to college. I mean, you kind of learn to live on your own for the first time for many people. Um, there's just tons of things that you're going to learn that you didn't get to learn in high school because it comes with a whole different ball game of, you know, being somewhere else and growing up, you know. Um, I just think that people push it so hard because they're, I mean, it's safe. I think it's the safe option because, you know, what, what do you hear when people say that they don't go to college? You hear, oh, it's because they were lazy. Oh, they didn't make good grades. Oh, like X, Y, and Z about why this person wasn't good or responsible or whatever. Um, and that's just not the case for many people. Um, like growing and being able to see how many people actually don't take the college path in order to pursue their career. It's, it's mind boggling because no one talks about it. And there's like a whole community of people that don't go to college, but like travel the world and do whatever they want and like make money doing that way. And, um, starting their own businesses and X, Y, and Z. And it's just, it's really, really cool to see that, but it's not talked about enough. So, you know, people are just not convinced that that's going to be a safe option for their child or, you know, for themselves. I mean, it's easy because everyone's like, oh, I want to move out. I don't want to live with my parents anymore. How am I going to do that? oh, I'm just going to go to college because like, I don't want to like pay for an apartment and whatever right now, even though you're paying student loans, like at school, you know, I always say that there's a will, like if there's a will, there's a way, like if you really don't want to live with your parents and you want to move out and start something and the, in retrospect, it's way cheaper. Honestly, it's more affordable to go and live on your own and start your own ventures. But that's scary for people because they, they aren't being controlled 
by a system like they're not being told like hey you need to be at this class at 9 a.m like you're being you know like if you don't have a schedule like me for example it's a lot of pressure on myself but you know seeing the success of doctors and lawyers and people who do go to school and you know bring home that paycheck in order to take care of their families it's so easy for people to be like okay duh like obviously i want the best for myself I- I'm going to go to college because I, you know, I need that paycheck. College doesn't guarantee you a job. I always tell people that um, because I think it can be so easy to be like, oh, I have a degree. Oh, I'm definitely going to get a job. But even today, like so many people who have degrees are working normal jobs, just like everyone else. So you kind of ask like, what is the difference between the two? And you just have to be willing to learn skills on your own, such as how to network yourself, how to pitch uh, ideas to people, how to work with people, you know, because those are the things that are really going to get you to where you want to be in any field, you know, usually it's the person that you know, that's going to help you get a referral for a job or for a, you know, like for a gig or anything. So it's like, I'm willing to put in the work right now to network and do all these things to further my career than to go to college and take the safer option. Because I know that for me, like my career doesn't require a degree, like, you know, so with that being said, I'm like, if I can do this all in, in, in my hands and on my terms, why I wouldn't I that's definitely true I definitely agree with you like I went to a high school that was like college is like definitely the only path like that was the goal like it was a college like preparatory school so everyone like it was expected that everyone should go to college so it wasn't even like talked about like other options or anything like that it's like you're going to college like that's it um Mm -hmm. and so um I kind of wish I had like known of the other options as well I think I probably still would have gone to college but I think it's beneficial for others to know that there are other options too like that's not always Mm -hmm. the path the right path for you it could be taking a gap year or multiple years before you go to college or like doing something different but I think it's definitely like in the school education system I think that other options should be like discussed with students and not Agreed. Just that you should just go to college because that's what everybody else is doing but that might not be the right path for you because college is so pushed and everyone's like that's the only way you're going to be successful how did you find the confidence like in yourself to say no I'm not going to go like down the traditional path because that's not for me um this is going to sound like a really like, (laughs) oh, duh. But like, I I really do think that I was able to establish a sense of self and a sense of who I was really early on. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, I do attribute a lot of that to the arts and just kind of my own personal experiences through, you know, being able to just kind of be my own leader in many aspects. I have the personality trait of a leader. So I've never really had the issue of like having, like needing confidence to do something. I was always the person that was like oh I mean like whatever like if I want to do it like I'm just gonna do it you know so it was one of those things where I really like I just you know I I'm a pretty logical person too when it comes to like like, oh pros and cons like is this really a smart idea to not go to college right now as it is pros and cons like it's just kind of the same so I'm like there's no it's not really a risk here because again if I want to go to college my grades were amazing in high school I can just go ahead and use that to apply whenever I want literally so I'm like there's nothing to lose the only thing I would be losing honestly you know I would rather have taken the risk to do this to see how far I could have gone than to go to college just to be safe right now you know so yeah that's kind of I don't know like I don't know if I answered the confidence question but I genuinely again just had a strong sense of self at an early age so yeah how has this time um since you're not in school um allowed you to work on things that you're passionate about yeah um that has been the most rewarding part for sure is just having ample amount of time but also that's the scariest that's the scariest part as well because it's like you have so much time on your hands and I question every day I'm like am I supposed to be doing this or like am should I be taking a break right now or you know like should I have a week off to myself because I've been like grinding all last week you know but that's the freedom of it as well but it's also the part where you know I overwork myself sometimes I'm very you know I'm a perfectionist in so many senses so um it's just you know it's one of those things where it's like oh if I'm not working now I could always be you know working on getting this brand deal I could always be working on getting my editing better and I'm like but there are times that I just need to rest and just not do anything you know so I 
I don't know. Did I just stray off the question? What was it? <laughs> it was, um, how has this time like allowed you to work on things that you're passionate about? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's scary and it's not. Um, it's also, yeah, it's given me so much time to be able to see, you know, if this is really something that I want to keep doing because I have so much time to do it. It's like, if I really didn't like it, I wouldn't spend all my time invested into creating content and, you know, acting and whatever. But I mean, obviously it's made me realize that this is something that I want to do with my career that I'm currently am doing with my career. It is my career. Um, so yeah, it definitely has given me just a better sense of definitely like this is you know it's a it's an assurance thing it's like now i know for sure like this is what i want to do because even in the lowest of lows with the global pandemic like you know like this is still something that i want to do so yeah um what careers are you working towards like current um let's see i mean obviously like i don't just say like oh acting and dancing like you y'all already get that um i guess um just furthering both careers, you know, I mean, there's just so many avenues that you can go down with both acting and social media, like for social media, it's great, like being my own personal brand, but I also want to grow my team. So I'm considering hiring people this year, like stuff like that. So it's like, just continuing to expand and keep growing because social media is one of those things that is always evolving, always ever changing. And truly, the future of branding and advertisement is influencers it is the people who are you know like just creating stuff for their personal brand so brands want that and I right now if you're listening to this like or watching this um you really like if you want to become an influencer or someone who creates content for yourself and make money doing it like that is the future of everything that is the future of it like I've been to tons of meetings and tons of you know zoom meetings and conferences and whatever and everyone says like this is the future like it really is people aren't going to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to have a tv ad when they can just use real people to you know advertise their stuff so you know, things like that, it just kind of gives me an extra sense of like, oh, yeah, like I can do this, you know, and so can you like, honestly, so I'm just working more towards that, like working with more brands this year, um, working for my own personal content, like growing my um, audience and just kind of doing all that stuff for social media wise. Um, also, social media is just a great tool as in just networking, because once I don't want to talk about numbers, because it's such a taboo thing, because it kind of sucks. I hate the whole analytical side sometimes because it can get really you know whatever but um yeah like but being able to just kind of network even though like even if you don't have a million numbers you don't need a million numbers in order to have an impact on people you don't need a million numbers in order to get your brand deal you don't need all that so understanding that is so great because anyone can seriously do this you just have to be willing to put in time and effort into making good content so definitely I've been working towards that for sure and just furthering that this year as we are still stuck at home for the most part um and as far as acting and dancing and whatever I'm seriously just open to anything I'm never shutting down you know an opportunity that deals with acting or dancing just because right now I would kill to be a part of something I miss performing on stage I miss you know being able to just be on set and just I don't know I just miss all of that right now so I don't care what it is I'd rather just do something um so yeah I'm just excited to see what this year has to bring for that because um I was able to get signed again um, to another agency at the end of last year, like September ish. So with that being said, it was, it was really interesting getting signed again during quarantine because it was like, Oh, like no one can get signed in quarantine. And I was like, I was willing to be able to find agencies and do my research and see who's like picking up people right now. And then I managed to get a referral for my agency and then boom, like it happened. So it's like stuff like that you know like you just have to be willing to seek opportunity even in times like this and yeah so any opportunity for any career opportunity I'm always willing to just kind of work towards it and just get what I want essentially and yeah that's that <laughs> that's really exciting um, are you thinking about moving to LA or New York in the future yeah so yeah, so if you guys didn't know, I lived in New York City um, uh, all of last year, like the end of last year, um, and then the beginning of, oh my god, no, now I'm getting confused because it's 2021. Okay, hold on. I lived there towards the end of 2019 and um, a bit of the beginning of 2020, so it was like half a year, so like six or seven months like total. 
Um, and I love New York City. I eat, breathe, sleep New York City. I love it. I miss it so much. I miss the energy. Um, and it's just great. I love it. But this year, or oh my God, last year, September 2020, um, I took a trip to LA because I thought I was going to move there towards the end of last year because I honestly, I didn't know like what the situation was for, you know, the pandemic and what's going on globally. So I did take a trip there because I wanted to scout areas, see if this was a place that I wanted to move to. Um, and then I realized that the pandemic was honestly getting worse. So I'm so glad that I went at the time that I did, because even though COVID was bad in LA, I was able to, you know, only see a couple people and like do my thing while I was there and then combat quarantine, do all that. Um, but see that LA, I don't know what it was, but LA is not my vibe per se. I like the space. I like the aspect of having like the beach and like whatever, but I mean, New York city has to be whatever. Um, but it's like, you know, LA, I really like it. I really do. Honestly, I love the weather. The weather's better for my skin. I have like super like sensitive dry skin, whatever. So I like love being able to have that weather. Um, but LA, I don't know if it, it just felt really weird. I don't know. I just, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would because I'd been three times before for competition, but I'd only stayed in one area. So I'd never really explored LA, but LA just has a weird LA culture that is so exactly what you think it is. So I don't know. I definitely think that if I were to move out there, I'd obviously find my people. So right now, home base is Charlotte, North Carolina, which I'm not mad about. I'm so glad to be able to, you know, be with my family and whatnot. But this year, I do hope to move again, <laughs> whenever that is. But I do think that I will be able to be somewhere else by the end of 2021, which is, which is nice. So yeah. Exciting. <laughs> I will be off to college in LA. So Fingers crossed that COVID gets itself fixed by then. <laughs> what are your goals that you want to achieve during this time? Um, so I've written my goals for this year and I'm really excited. Like, I really do think that this year has tons of opportunity, but I think it starts with just clarifying what's going on inside first so that I'm able to externally manifest things because right now it's just it's hard like every like everyone is going through mess right now like it's it's really bad so I the number one thing that I want to prioritize is my mental health and what's going on and I think I did get a good grasp of that towards the end of 2020 which I'm so grateful for again and you know just furthering that and just being able to really you know continue my journaling streak continue like you know digging deeper internally to see what I want externally so that you know it's really my goals and what I want um there's nothing Thing that I'm really like oh like this is what I want to achieve like there's always like number goals we want to achieve even if that's like subscribers or you know Instagram followers and this and although I do have those goals for myself it's like those aren't the most important things to me you know like just being able to make it out of 2020 was like such a great goal to achieve you know for everyone that's still here that's great and you know right now it's just one of those things it's like what are the relationships that I'm able to prioritize and really get a hold of like in 2021 like what are the ones that stuck with me through 2020 that I really appreciate for this new year and that's what's most important so like right now it's like it would be so much of myself to be like oh you have to do this Jada and like whatever and like be so harsh on myself to be like these are the goals that you know you have to achieve or like you have to do but you know we always hope to like achieve our goals which I know like I'm again very confident in the fact that I will achieve my goals and be exactly where I want to be so I'm not going to doubt the universe I'm not gonna like you know like be super like impatient because like even though I am very impatient it's like I've had to learn to be patient and just wait because things will come they will come but they're meant for a certain time so just keep working internally and keep doing everything and you will start to see progress like I made so much progress last year that I didn't that I didn't even think was achievable so I mean just continuing that into this year is just like a goal in its own so yeah I love that so um, what have been some challenges you've been working through or you've worked through? Yeah, um, um, I'm, 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 I, towards the, uh, towards the beginning of just kind of doing this not in college journey, it was always a question of like doubt at that point. And it's funny because like, like, was this the right decision? Like, I don't know, but I definitely knew that regardless, I have a year to figure it out. Like I had a whole year, like if I wanted to, um, but it just always kind of got nerve wracking because at first I didn't know I was moving to New York city. I didn't know I was even going to be there. So I ended up taking a trip after I graduated slightly, like a month after I graduated high school to New York city for like two weeks. 
um, just to see if I'd like it and whatnot. And I loved it, fell in love with it. I came back home and I was like, okay, what do I do now? Like I sat there and I was like, what do I do? Like, I really want to go back but how, you know, and then it was one of those things where I was like questioning, like, how am I going to do it and this and this and this? Um, and again, when you just trust that everything will work out the way that you want it to, it's crazy because it, it will, it, like it really will. And I was literally offered to move to New York City to live there for free um, two months later to go and nanny. And it was the best experience ever. I love the kid, love the family so much. Um, and it was amazing. And just knowing and seeing how that was able to manifest into my life to then be able for me to move again to New York City at the beginning of 2020 before COVID. Um, it was just crazy to see that like you really can achieve anything that you want and you might not even see how it would work, but that's not your job to worry about, you know, how it's going to work. So with that being said, those are definitely things that I worked through. It's just like kind of the slight amount of doubt that's there just because you never know, like you never know what's going to happen. But those circumstances sometimes are uncontrollable, but whatever you believe that you're destined for, you're destined for, you know, like whatever you truly believe is what will manifest. So yeah, I like to say that, but um, yeah, obviously the occasional like <laughs> mental health battles that everyone's been going through last year. Um, yeah, just working towards that and having just no sense of purpose last year. I felt a lot of just like, what am I doing? Like I'm editing for like 10 hours a day and just like filming and trying to get all this content, but for what, like, what, why am I doing this? You know, um, that was frustrating because it was just like, you know, at home, like at one point I was like, man, I would love to be in college right now because I'm bored as hell. Like I was not doing anything. Um, you know, everyone towards the beginning of quarantine was just like, you know, watching Netflix for a million hours a day and just like not doing anything. And I felt the same way. Like when you don't feel like you have a sense of purpose or something that you're a part of, you know, at that point I was like really considering, like I thought I was going to be in a show or something, you know, at that point. So I was so bored. I was like, dude, I, I would kill to take it on my class. Like I love learning so much. So I I was like, I'm just like willing to do anything right now, you know, and that was really hard to overcome because I was like, what am I doing? And I had to understand that stillness was so important for 2020 and just being able to realize that like, you know, have, have the ability to not do anything is like something to be grateful for so many is home with their families but they can't be and whatnot so just realizing all that and just practicing gratitude and whatever was really what helped me get through all of those things so yeah what have been some successes that you've had successes um well I hit 10k in March on YouTube which was crazy last March and then in December last month whatever um I just can't believe it's 2021 anyway um but in December I hit 20k so I was like oh my gosh like cool like we're we're moving up we're doing the thing um but as far as you know not number goals um I got signed to an agency like I mentioned earlier um my second one because I dropped the first one because of mess craziness um (laughs) let's see what else um really being able to like go live on YouTube and just talk to my subscribers for hours and hours and hours and like actually meet them on Instagram live. And, you know, started, I started a Patreon. I actually surprised one of my subscribers in Pittsburgh. I like had a subscriber come and stay with me for like two days. And like, now we're like friends and it's just like stuff like that, like that, those are the things that made 2020, 2020. And those were the successes for me, for sure. Last question. Do you have any advice for anyone who's questioning whether or not they should go to college or if they have family that's not supportive of their decisions or they don't know like where to find that support system do you have any advice for them yes 1000 percent um I always like I always open this up because this is you know just a part of who I am but I always say if you really have no one to talk about this stuff with DM me. My DMs are literally open. Um, I will spend hours talking to you guys like all day just about like, you know, what you need help with and college and, you know, just kind of deciding whether or not if you want to go or not. That's something that's super, like I'm super passionate about because I know that, you know, if, if people need that sense of guidance and I, I know that I can be of guidance to that. Why would I just kind of hold that in, you know? So I always say my DMs are open. That's number one. Number two, try and have an open, candid conversation with your parents or friends or people who look over you that you trust, um, that you really trust their opinion on, you know, and then just kind of weigh out decisions, weigh out options, and also don't cut anything off too easily. You know, like don't just say, I'm definitely not going to college or don't say I'm definitely going to college because, you know, like once you cut off those things, you don't really 
like you just kind of cut it off completely without exploring what it could have been because some people need college like some people actually need college and some people don't but you know it really does take sitting down and being like what do I want and like understanding what you want to be able to decide that for yourself so yes I highly suggest just like really get a hold of what you want and that's obviously way easier said than done but um being able to just really like I'm telling you, like, once you see what you want, it will be clearer. Like, you will understand what you want, and you can see if you're doing it because other friends are doing it. Like, you will be able to see all that stuff, but it takes a lot of journaling and reflecting. So, I would say journal because, you know, those things just kind of start coming out onto the page, whether you like it or not. And then you're like, oh, okay, that's interesting. I actually don't want to go to college, or I actually do want to go, you know? So, stuff like that. But yeah, I don't, those are my tips. <laughs> <laughs> do I want to? so much for coming Jada on this podcast and talking with me this was such a great discussion I can't believe that we literally this is the first time we're talking to each other I know that is weird I we feel like we've talked before you can shout out your social media and let people know where to find you sure yeah my Instagram is at Jada Jones with three s's j-a-d whoa forgot how to spell my name j-a-d-a-j-o-n-e-s-s-s and then my youtube channel is just jada jones and then i have a podcast called high key adulting and by the time you listen to this episode um my episode would have released already because i had to take a break you know <laughs> through the new year so my new episode for this year will be out already so yeah thank you so much for having me <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming So definitely check Jada out on her YouTube, Instagram, and podcast. So I want to thank you all for listening. You might be watching this on YouTube or listening to us on our podcast. You can listen to more podcast episodes on Spotify or Apple Podcasts if you search Kaleidoscope Teen Radio or on our YouTube channel, Kaleidoscope Teen Magazine. And please make sure to just subscribe to our online magazine and podcast and follow us on Instagram at Kaleidoscope Teen. All of our social media links and Jada's social media links will be in the description box. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.